Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to make electronic ignition for um, any motorcycle basically out of a chainsaw or um, hedge cutter, anything with a small petrol engine. This is the bike I'm going to fit it to. Um, the trickiest thing first of all is usually getting the old flywheel off. Um, you can see on this one that here you would have had all of the old electronics which had all corroded away. This is a 1940 roughly motorcycle. Um, I've made here this homemade flywheel puller which basically you release these nuts here or this nut rather, twist that round to loosen it off and then when you do these bolts up here, these nuts up here it will push this metal against that and pull the flywheel that way and they do snap off pretty hard you'll probably have to make one of these because they are after they've been on there a few years they're tricky to get off, so once you've got that off there you are, that's what that was for right, over here is um part of a normal any household chainsaw small one maybe 30 cc or less uh, this one particularly came out of um, a petrol strimmer you can see it's an old Bosch one I think it was there's the old magneto and the HT lead and uh, the little aluminium flywheel with the two magnets in there so what I want to do is take one of these and make electronic ignition for basically fit it to the motorcycle and it's actually pretty straightforward you can do it on a lathe like I've got here if you want to make it a bit more accurate but I did actually make one over here earlier with just using a pillar drill with a dirty great big inch bit straight through the middle and it worked okay but it wasn't I just thought I'd make it better anyway as I've got a lathe so um, down here is one that I've been making now I've made a backing plate for it again I did it on the lathe the first version I didn't make this but I thought I would this time this just sits on there like that, it's relatively straightforward and I've drilled two holes through this, if you notice I've cut all the fins off here I'm trying to do this one handed by the way um, I've cut all the fins off there so that it fits nice and straight onto that plate, I did that on the lathe of course once you've done that you then put that onto here like so there we go. these bolts will of course go straight through there you can see them, they bolt into the flywheel. There we go. It's nice and tight. Like that. So you want to make sure, of course, that the piston is just below top dead centre when it fires. You can work this out by taking out the spark plug. It's quite straightforward. Getting something soft and either looking at their feeling compression or you can make a little gadget, for instance I, would, I wouldn't use a bolt of course but you can poke something soft like a straw is quite a good one in there and then as the piston comes up you can see it it moves the bolt up but like I said I wouldn't use anything metallic so it would damage a cylinder or piston for that matter and then you can work out where top dead centre is and you want these two magnets because these are what's going to cause the magneto to fire so you want those two magnets to uh, make sure that it fires just before top dead center. A lot of people wonder where it, whereabouts the actual mag the spark occurs with these, and I think the first one charges the first coil, the primary coil, and the second one causes the spark um, to jump from one set of windings to another. So then you need to make a, a plate to fit around your engine, which I've got somewhere uh -huh. like this. So this, this is about 5mm aluminium plate and um, I just drew around, obviously around so it matches around here. Just take that off. And I actually cut this with a jigsaw so you don't need a dirty great big lathe to do that. And then I mounted the magneto on there. Yeah, just made a little block for it. Um, you can do that with a Dremel if you haven't got a milling machine or something like that. It's quite straightforward. And you can see that I've bolted the, um, the magneto onto there. Now this will then fit on here, like so. You can see there where I've, I'll screw that in quickly. Okay. Then this will become, as this rotates of course, it will cause a spark. And you can measure what would be the traditional gap between there. I'm not going to screw this up of course because I'm doing this one handed. But you can see the basic principle. And um, so essentially as this is now rotating, the first, the first coil is here, and then the second one 
will re um, cause the spark. If you notice, actually, I've put this flywheel on back to front off the way it comes off of the um, off a chainsaw. That caught me off guard slightly because I made all this thing and didn't work. In fact, the motorbike ran backwards, which is a bit weird. Uh, but I suppose it's two strokes, so it could do. Um, so anyway, you measure the gap between these two plates here and um, all sets of windings. And as that rotates, you can now you can see as they go past, so the spark will occur about there. So you can now adjust the timing by rotating this plate backwards and forwards. And that will alter the exact point at which it um, sparks. So essentially you've got a magneto ignition with, um, with adjustable timing. And here you can see I've just um, done a bit of a poor job extending the HT lead, but it works absolutely fine. Put it up there. And um, this bike hadn't run, I think, for about 15, 20 years um, because all the old windings and that were ruined. But um, it started absolutely first time, and now it runs absolutely fine. Right, now for the timing. Um, <clears throat> There's a couple of useful things I've made here. One of them is um, there's a spark plug in there, which I've drilled the middle out of, and I've put in a wooden lolly stick with centimetre markings on up to five mil in the middle, the smaller mark. Now I know um, all your purists are going to laugh and go about that, but there you go. Um, this isn't a purist motorcycle. It's a fact of getting an old 1940s bike back on the road for five quid and actually be able to use it when the parts aren't available or well, certainly not in the UK anyway, this being a German motorcycle um, so what I then what we've done is worked out the uh, top dead centre for the piston which is marked here the T and that there is the point at which it sparks just in there now um, we're currently set to top dead centre so we know that it sparks there I've been using this um, timing strobe to flash that. Now this is quite tricky to do on your own because you need to kick um, kick start the bike. Obviously not with that in there, but um, and then keep an eye on the timing thing and mark it at the same time. So what I've done is um, I put a socket on the flywheel and without any form of spark plug in there, I then made a bolt that's square in there. And we can fit that on the end there, look, like that. Again, I'm trying to do all this one-handed. And there you can see. And then you can use that as like an electronic starter, really. Put it on there. Um, be warned, I've eaten a few of these drills in my time. Um, they get hot pretty quick, so you can't do it too long. But it's easily long enough to um, get that fired on there. And then you can see. Now, these older um, single-cylinder bikes... For some reason, I suppose it's just ease of calculation, they'd rather than have timing retarded in um, degrees, it's retarded in millimetres um, of piston travel. So this particular bike is about five millimetres. Now obviously that stick is at a slight angle there, so this isn't going to be wholly accurate. But if we rest it in there, and just sits on a five millimetre mark. We can then just crank this thing backwards, because we know we're at top dead centre, until that there shoots back down just see it creeping down that must be five millimeters right so now we know that um, this will fire that must be about five millimeters before top dead center all we need to do now I can't do this with one hand but need to hold that and just rotate this backwards so that that white mark touches that one and then we know that's exactly five millimeters of piston travel before top dead center. And then all we need to do is get the feeler gauges in here, like that, and then clamp all this tight, and she should run. Okay, following on from the timing, we just need to um, check a couple of things. You can see here that it's about out of focus. I'll move back a bit. There we go. Right, um, I've now adjusted this. You can see it, you can hear it out, which nipped me. It no longer uh, rubs as I did when I first installed it. This aluminium block here is fixed by these, there's a bolt there. You can see down there, there's a bolt here. And behind this on the metal plate is a slot, so I can move that whole thing backwards and forwards. 
um, only needs to move by about a millimetre in total, provided this is quite the hole in there is quite accurate, otherwise this will wobble. But as I did that particular thing on a lathe, um, I know it's well balanced and pretty accurate. So that's now adjusted to five millimetres before top dead centre. So I'm going to bring in the strobe here and try and do all this one handed, which is not going to be easy. Get the strobe down in there, like so. Bring in the drill on the other hand, it's going to make a bit of noise. I don't know if you can see that flashy or not, but it just shows you it does spark a treat and the timing is spot on at 5mm TDC, BTDC.